I'm if, going through my files right now. If, <laughs> if I were to go through any other, uh, any Jim Carrey movies that I still come back to and still have a huge appreciation for, and by that I mean, like, not just, like, I respect it for what it is, I mean, I respect the mask for what it is, but a movie that I have just pure joy watching, it's Ace Ventura. <laughs> Oh, and, I, yeah, no, I was about to say, Ace Ventura is so fucking good. I actually need to see the first one. I've seen the second one, because Riley showed it, but that's you're not, not, first, I, you're not the missing first, much I've of it. It has, its, it has its moments, I believe it that. It has its hilarious uh, moments. The, the, but the, it first doesn't... One, the first one hasn't really aged too well in certain regards. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. one thing I will... Uh, the one thing I do know about Ace Ventura from the first movie anyway is the famous scene where... Ace Ventura enters a fucking death metal concert. Yeah, and that's because I mentioned it a lot. Because, yeah, like... Well, go ahead. I was going to say, well, not only that, but also because Jim Carrey has admitted he is a fan of Cannibal Corpse. Yeah. So having Cannibal Corpse in that scene made it ten times more amusing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, because, like, that was somewhat my introduction to what supposedly metal was. I was like, oh, God, what the fuck is this? And I found it to be utterly obnoxious. And I had a very, very big impression as a kid that all oh, metal is just screaming her ass into the microphone all the time. Which is why That's I which is why I steered away from bands like System of a Down and Slipknot. However, I was too young to understand the idea that this kind of material is there for people who just want to vent and just go completely wild. And mm -hmm. go ahead. I was just going to say, not to mention that even when people hear the word metal, they just think, oh, it's screaming. But you have to remember that there are multiple subgenres to it. There are. And yeah. one of the things that it's kind of a pet peeve to me, Def and I are definitely on the same level about this. Um, how many of you know the band Ghost? Me. Well, I know you do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he is a big metal head, very edgy. We're we're both we're both music junkies, so we'll talk about yeah. anything. But go ahead. Yeah. You were. Is, I, uh, I thought I somebody still continued. I don't think anybody really knows Ghost. <laughs> okay. Um. To give an example of what their music is, they have a huge classic rock vibe. Imagine, imagine Black Sabbath, but with a campier charm to it. So basically, yeah. if Black Sabbath is pretty, like, queer and gay. I mean, <laughs> you're not wrong, especially considering the whole aspect that like they do. Like, if, if Black Sabbath were to basically have, like, a whole RuPaul's Drag Race moment. I mean, considering that the entire band shtick is that they're members of the, sa of the Satanic Church, with their lead singer being a Satanic version of the Pope, yes. So, Black Sabbath, if they were to be, like, going to, like, a Pope fucking church and be like, we are here and we are queer. <laughs> I mean... Okay, well, sure, let's I, go with that. I, I think a better way to describe it is that they have a huge classic rock vibe to it with a little touch of 80s every once in a while. I was first introduced to the oh. band by uh, one of their hits that came out in 2018. Uh, the song was called Rats, and I was I was impressed with what they were going for. It had a nice uh, 80s, 70s sort of vibe to it. And the music video, I fucking loved the campy 70s, like, like footage, you know, where, uh, like, you would have to see it yourself, but it, like, it looks like some kind of apocalypse sort of thing going on. Um, and you have the lead singer who does some, like, ballerina dances and shit, which I'm like, kudos to him, dude. Ballerina... <laughs> Like, a lot of people look down on it so much because they think that ballet is just something, like, only gay, like, what is it, like, only women do or something like that? Or there's women, a... and women very, um, <laughs> depressed men, but it's a, it's a, it's a good, it's a good Rustic, thing. Hello. Believe it, like, but, but what, well, actually learning ballet is a heavy exercise. Like, you have to basically stand on the tip of your feet on your yeah. toes. Some people, like, I've had some serious foot problems I, after practicing ballet. Yeah. No, no. Have you seen a ballerina's feet after they've been fully, like, broken in? And I don't Angle. use that phrase. No. I, I yeah, can't. no, no. I don't use that phrase lightly. They are broken to yeah. be able to stand like that. Ouch. Mate, mate, I've seen Black Swan. I know yes. how ballerina practices. Uh, not pleasant. If you haven't seen Black Swan, it is a fucking mind trip, and I love it. 
It is no, a I, I, okay. I need to see. I, I need to too. see Black Swan. But mm-hmm. I did see another movie from that same director that is actually also incredible. Called um, it's called The Fountain, and it's actually a movie he made about death. And if you're wondering, because all of his movies have a character with an obsession, um, the main character is is mortally obsessed with figuring out a solution to not dying. But it is the it is told in the most pagan way. Like, it is a story told in a pagan fashion. It is so cool. I mean, what, for one You've thing... You've seen it, right? I mean, I haven't seen it. I have to see it because I am familiar with Darren Afronowski's work. Black yeah. Swan is my favorite movie from okay, him. So, Same. Go ahead. Yeah. But here's what this here's what this movie is about without spoils. Okay, so it's, it's actually telling three stories, but when viewed all t- through flashbacks and randomly jumping between the other... But when viewed in the manner it is presented, it tells one narrative. And in a weird way, like, it makes intuitive sense in a lot of ways. So you hear you hear three stories. Um, one is a modern-day doctor who is obsessed with finding a cure for death or dying because he's obsessed with... He, that's his obsession, and he's losing his wife. Um, hey. Ow! Then there's the story of a Spanish conquistador um, who is going on a mission for the for the Spanish queen to find the fountain of youth in Mesoamerica. Um, and then the last one is, okay, this is where it gets weird. It's in the far future. And it turns out the doctor succeeded in finding a cure for immortality because he's floating on a floating piece of land toward the ship Bulba nebula. Huh. I love that. <laughs> yeah. And like the scene and like the flashbacks like spliced together. Um, the stories interlock in the, like the coolest way, in my opinion, or at least the most mind blowy type of way. Um, like he'll randomly, like he'll randomly remember a time, like the the future guy, the immortal. Like he's kind of like a monk other now. Way, other way, um, he'll just get like a random memory of when he was the doctor, however uh, many thousands yeah. of years ago that was. Uh, I mean, again. I'm, I'm from considering what Aronofsky is pretty infamous for. I'm not surprised that the plot is like this. I think infamous no, is a little good. too harsh. Of a, yeah, he's a really good director. It's so but, good. Glenn Glenn but, and but, the Zim Zam. Hey, Misty. Hi, Misty. Hello. But anyway, uh, but with Aaron Ar- when it comes to movies directed by Aaron Aronofsky, you got to be ready to get extremely uncomfortable with his movies because, like, the first movie I saw from him was. The Wrestler, and it was an extremely depressing movie to watch. The second movie was a film that he made before The Wrestler came out, and that was called oh, what was it? Requiem of a Dream, and I never oh, wanted God. to watch it again. It's not a bad movie, uh, but the final act was just like a kick in the balls. It was so brutal to watch. Uh, golden, Golden, yes. it wasn't just a kick in the balls. It was smash the hammer, and then spat on, and then eaten by dogs. It was really a it was a real pain in the ass to watch. Yeah, it, it's a it's it's a beautiful movie. Don't get me wrong, Afronowski did an amazing job telling you know his message in that film. But I'm not gonna deny it is a very very depressing movie, and I never want to watch it again. Yeah, there's uh, like no uh, good Grave of the Fireflies. Oh God. No, no, no I, to go back to Ionowski, I just want to say one last thing. Uh-huh. Even if what I described about the fountain is weird. <laughs> Um, is weird. You will be crying by the end of it. Um, considering how I felt about Requiem for a Dream, I can probably imagine that. Oh, but not and... for it's not for any kick in the balls reason. It's like a genuine like catharsis. That's what I lo- that's what I, I like mean, about fair. it. Fair. Um, another lack movie of two. That Go he... the other way. Jesus, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. Another movie that he did, which unfortunately I am not a big fan of. I think it's actually one of his worst movies. <laughs> Was Mother 2017. Mm. Good God, Mother 2017. I tried hard to give it the benefit of doubt, but... No, I consider it his most pretentious, his most up his ass, and to make it worse, it is arguably one of the the rare times that his movies, (sighs) even though they tend to make me feel uncomfortable, actually made me physically, like, internally uncomfortable. I felt like vomiting. Oh, that's how I felt with colliding with the chance of meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that movie could have been so much better. I mean, I the first one was okay. The first one was okay. The second one is 
Meh, I and forgot there I don't was even a second one. No, um, no, I'm one of the few people. Like I, I um, the two directors, uh, Phil Lord and uh, Chris Miller. Chris Miller. Yeah. Mwah. I I give them mad respect <laughs> for the movies they brought us. The Lego Movie, Spider Verse, the uh, that the uh, Mitchells versus the Machines, but. Glad with the chance of meatballs was not one of them. I've seen one of the characters, like it was, I think it was like a mayor or something like that. He indulged himself, got so fat. One of them got turned into a turkey, and I was just like, "This is making me sick. This is so gross. What the fuck is this?" So, if we were gonna talk about uncomfortable mediums, or at the very least, movies or TV shows, uh huh. Um, I think a good example of. <laughs> I don't even know if I can bring this up, considering the themes that go with it. Um, uh, promising, it... promising yeah. young woman actually makes me feel uncomfortable. Uh, oh yeah, she told like, me about she she told me about what that movie is about. It's it's catharsis, but the entire time I was at either at the edge of my seat or just feeling like I should just be. Utterly uncomfortable. Like, I feel internally just like squirming. And damn it! Oh, do you want me to tell them what it is? Uh, What's a live stream? Called? Just keep uh, in mind we're watching a live stream. If yeah. Just, uh, we're not yeah. watching. We're in a live Promising stream. Young, it's called Promising Young Woman. And long story short, without going into um, very uncomfortable territory, it involves a woman getting revenge on men for doing something. Isn't that called um, I Spit on Your Grave? It's uh, another movie no, that's like that, it's, yeah. Um, it's actually, like, surprise. from what I've heard, it's nothing compared to I Spit on Your Grave. Oh, boy. Um, it's actually a lot more uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, like, um, something that has come up modern times, and in my opinion, this beats out any movie, TV show of any of caliber of any sort. Uh -huh. No, no, just in terms of just in general. <laughs> Look up the stuff that you can find online because I'm just going to say this: there is no horror movie that can ever produce a greater sense of horror than the Mandela Catalog. Oh God, yes, Mandela Thank you. Catalog. It, I it, to look it, that up. it slaughters the best Hollywood ever had to offer, and probably can't even muster it. Okay, so muster. I mentioned this a while back because Wendigoon did a hour long retrospective on it because he actually yeah. is a big fan of it. But and can I go essentially, in? it's a it's it's folk it's a it's one of those analog horror series where it's focusing on a scenario of a world where can I, entities. Do you mind, are, do you mind if I explain one part of it that is tied yeah. to that because this, this, it's kind of what I wanted to segue into? Yeah. Um, so there's this idea that there are these. You later learn that they're basically literally demons. Um, these entities called alternates that um, are effectively doppelgangers. So if you're already afraid of doppelgangers, if you're Sorry. Uh, no, there, there's already that. But then there's multiple variants of it, including the most common variant where there is some form of corruption on it. Yeah. And it's like alarming corruption. But what's really fascinating about the series is that the Think Principle really establishes what the series is about. It's a two-minute video, supposedly from the U.S. government. And it talks about, oh, this is what they are, and here's what you got to do. And then you learn various things, like ah. how they look like people with deformities. They move in, like, unnatural ways that are alarming to look at. They, um... Oh, and they're into psychological warfare. They'll emotionally break um, you. But, like, well, yeah, the, the, um, the other you. part about that is the series itself, and this is why it will sting far harder than any, mo than any movie ever could, is that, um... A lot of internet horror in general right now will actually play a deliberate mind games with you, including like fabrication of false information. Um, it'll do like an like the um, the Mandela catalog is also an alternate reality game, so it's meant to take place in our world, with the one exception that alternates exist. But what's interesting is that they'll make up conditions like mental diseases that sound eerily familiar with stuff that you've gone through, and then base it in, oh yeah, you just narrowly avoided an alternate. It's actually pretty damn good, and I actually do insist on re I, and recommend the Mandela Catalog. If you yeah, want it in. lies to you too, and it ooh, but it hurts so good. God, <laughs> it's it. such a good series, and again, I praise Wendigoon for being the one that got the uh, the video like more attention because like the the algorithm. Oh fuck, 
the algorithm was already getting it attention, but then Wendigoon just decided, hey, I like this series and I'm going to talk very good about it. And everyone's like, okay, now I need to do it. Also, Markiplier and Jacksepticeye help matters yes. with doing Let's Plays of it. Especially um, when the creator, Alex, said, oh, by the way, one of the characters, Mark, is literally named after Markiplier. Nice. Well, another thing, too, that he offered Windigoon was he was actually going to offer him bits of lore information oh. in case he wanted to talk about it. Oh, yeah. Um, he was literally, he told, he literally told Wendigoon, hey, yeah, yeah, um, we, we get it. if you're um, interested, I can tell you everything. I can pretty much spoil everything for you. And Wendigoon's like, no, I want to know for myself. I want to anyway, see how it I'd, goes. To go on from that. Um, uh, what is it? Sorry, I lost my train of thought. I was trying to segue no, into fine. something. I was no, I was trying to segue. I was trying to segue into something, but the... <laughs> my bad. Um, well, that, yeah. Well, okay. Well, to get back to what I was talking about earlier in regards to the band Ghost, uh, but if you listen uh, to give a sample of what their music sounds like, they're very classic rockish. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of uh, people. Just back. Yeah, a lot of people like. There's there's a certain hate behind it, and that being because their music doesn't sound as heavy. It doesn't sound as like any other metal band out there who likes to make that kind of you know aggressive sort of sound to it. Uh, they, instead, they called them like Scooby Doo like metal band or something like that, which which is a little bit weird to say, a little insulting. I mean. So, what was that band that Betty and Veronica or like the Archies had? Was yeah, the it? Archies. Yeah, it was the Archies. So, are they describing this band as like the Archies of Scooby Doo? I don't know exactly. All I know is that Ghost, like their music is criticized for being too, um, what is it, like. Well, they 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 think they, their music is corny or something like that. Yeah. And oh my god, I'm trying to not get the fucking metal cap. All right, I broke all the blocks. Where the hell is the eighth red coin? This is gonna drive me crazy. Here we see Golden Fox desperately trying to squirm all over the place. That's what I've been doing for the past like ten minutes or so. <laughs> He's been doing it for the past hour and a half for him to get. The okay, record. it was not an hour and a half. What the hell are you talking? Galaxy's World record. Trolling. <laughs> World record speed run. Here we come, boys and girls. We got this. Hulk. He, it has taken him almost three hours to find this red coin. Throws Galaxy a bottle at her head. Yeah. Catches the bottle with my magic and throws it back at you. Do me hurt my gremlin. Yeah. Oh, kitty. Hi. Hey, kitty. Hey, kitty. Hi, kitty. Uh, yeah, my auntie, I just kind of woke up. Hello. Okay. Hi. Hello. Hello. So, since we're just now starting this, and I hope this picks it up. Yeah! yeah. There we go. Excellent. <laughs> what are we doing? What? Is there a party? Yep. Yeah, sort of. This is a stream. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Alright. If you don't How want are... to be part of the stream, you... Uh... No, you're fine. I'm just... I, I'm just trying to function with my half brain over here. <laughs> <laughs> Left brain or right brain? My half brain. I've been up since 4 a.m. Oh, God. Oh, me God. too. <laughs> me too. So, I, like, took a nap, and now I'm awake. And I might have to take a nap again, because I have to be up before 10. So, I'm going to be up for a little bit, and then I'm going to go to sleep again. Okay. Uh, so, it's like, okay, to describe... Kitty, to describe your situation in a nutshell um you know mm -hmm. that open you know that opening uh what is it called the opening queue from windows xp yeah that's me yeah de -de 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 -de. and then you're that is back my to brain sleep. currently right now in all windows xp <laughs> so would that mean you're the wallpaper bliss what yeah, the uh, the the wall the, the famous wallpaper of Windows XP, you know the gr the scenery green background. Oh, I thought you were talking about Rainbow Lady. I was like, what? Is this another <laughs> no, inside no. joke no. of your lore? You know, um, that photograph was. I don't know if that's still true, but that photograph for the longest time was the most viewed picture in the entire world. Oh yeah, it, it is. It was actually um, a Pokemon card, I think. Yeah, the the one of the best part too about it. <sighs> 
it is not photoshopped. People thought it was photoshopped because like, there's no way it could look like that. And no, it was not photoshopped. It was not photoshopped, but keep this in mind though. Um, if you were to go to that, if you were to go to where it was today, because there is a YouTube video of a guy who yeah, I saw it. And found it. Yeah. But it's covered in like vine crop, yards and yeah, such. like vineyards and crops and farmland basically. Yeah, it doesn't look like how it did back in um But if you were told you can recognize the hill and the scenery, yeah. you can recognize it if it's pointed out. Ah, get up. Yeah. It I actually kind of find it interesting that the dude who took the photo for that like he ended up not expecting it to be one of his most popular photos. And I think even he, like, he to this day says that, like, apparently Windows was so impressed with this image that they actually, that instead of just simply telling him, oh, just send it to us, like, on a disc and email it to, and send it to us through our, um, through our, um, mail sec, through our mail thing, they actually told them, fly to our play, fly to our headquarters, and give us the file to our offices. They like, love him. They them or whatever. He... he apparently paid him like a huge amount of figures, but he never said how much. Uh, Enough where his happy ass to retire with no worry about financial problems. All over a simple hill hill scenery that he uh, just. Go to be down. real, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't disclose it either because I'm telling other people my strategy. Say I somehow got like really wealthy really fast, like I'm on the lot three or something. I wouldn't even really try to live the upper class lifestyle. What I'd probably do is I would just probably live a nice middle class one, claim that I just work from home, but I would never tell anyone because I'm just like, the moment that I let people know that, the moment is the moment everything becomes just about money and I don't want to ruin that. And I prefer a middle class environment to a rich one anyway, so I'd rather just incognito it. Oh, I know what I'm supposed to do now. Secret You're English. supposed to become a, a secret rich man. Is that what we're supposed to do? <laughs> I, no, I should be a secret rich man. Oh, but we it, all do. It's because of that, though, that, like, if you guys, like, say, want, we're in the same situation and just decided never to tell anyone, I would not blame you. Yeah, although, to be fair, from what I've heard, he, he can't disclose how much Windows paid for him for the photo, mainly because there's probably an NDA on it. That makes sense, too, but even then, like, if I was that guy, you wouldn't need to slap me with an NDA. I just wouldn't want to tell people. I mean, understandable, especially for that very popular photo. Which I, I doubt, any... which I, which is on my phone, and I, at some points, made it my wallpaper, especially on my iPod. No, I, here's the funny part. If you have, like, a, there were early generations of the iPod Touch that didn't, that instead of having iOS, had a special version of Windows XP on them. Yeah, so you can technically get an Apple iPod, like, again, one of the older touch generations, with Windows XP. I mean, to be fair, Windows did, like, give out money to Apple to help them out when they were going through financial troubles. To be and fair, it, like, the history between those two is kind of... It's give and take. It's back and forth, I'll put it like that. Although, apparently, they're still... Hmm? Poke the Misty. Wait. I boopos the death horse. Wait, wait, were you referring to Misty when I... I'm gonna just put Galaxy in sync because wait, she is no, tired too. Wait, did you Ugh! take me for Misty? No. I mean you're both gremlins. Oh I know, but like who That's like... racist. Ooh. Shut the fuck up, Riley. <laughs> Riley, the witching god. <laughs> Holy shit, breathe, kitty. I'm dying. Yeah. Oh, don't die. I don't want you to die. Oh my god, that killed me. That like that oh that went straight to my orifices. Oh my god. Ooh, Congratulations, Riley. You nearly killed Misty. What did I do? Kitty. Wait, Misty. You know what you did. Why are you asking? <laughs> her. 
I'm sorry, Kitty. I confused you for someone else again. Oh, it's fine. I got to clip this, please. Okay. This. Missy, I you are cutting you out like crazy. It's How fine. bad? Hold on, Missy, you're cutting out like crazy. How bad? Uh, when you were when you were being exaggerative in your voice, you were periodically cutting out. <sighs> Yeah. It seems my mic does not like it when I yell. I okay, I wouldn't say, okay if the, in in regards to that it probably to, well, I wouldn't like it either if somebody's yelling in my ear. That's and, a mood. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. Let me see if Ow! I can just adjust. Is that better? Does that sound better? You uh, good? I think so. You're good.